Hello everyone, my name is Ryan, I am the developer of GCA Launcher, and today's video, I know I haven't done one in a long while, and that's for good reason. Uh, the last video that I had done, I was talking about GCA Launcher V2 and how the progress of the update was coming along. We're nearing the release of Google Play, and I wanted to take some time today to talk about the new release, so when it releases on Google Play, uh, you know what you're expecting, you know what you know it's coming, it's almost ready, and I just wanted to talk about a few things while we were here. Um, the last update that GCA Launcher has re uh, received was last October in 2019. It's almost been a year, you know, four months off, basically, four or five months, you know. Um, that's a very long time, and that's a long time for people to decide whether or not this was an application that they wanted to con continue using or not. So, those of you who have been around that whole time, that means a lot to me. That's a good 2,000 users who have just stuck it out and kind of wondered what's happening, what's going on in the background, is something new coming, is there a new update coming, you know, what happened, where's the developer, you know, all these questions that, you know, have flooded me for the past year. I have answers. I have proof. It's right here. Now, GCA Launcher V2 releases this month globally, around the world, you know, everywhere. Um, there are things that I got to do before that happens. You know, there's a lot of preparation. There's getting things ready for translations. There's, um, you know, I got to look at tips. I got to look at uh, tutorials. I got to teach everybody how to reuse everything. You know, everything's different. You know, if you've been using GCA Launcher V1 for the past year, uh, when you move to V2, there's going to be a huge difference. You know, everything has been rebuilt from the ground up. And, you know, um, there was always room for improvement, but in version one, uh, there were a lot of things that I had approached that, you know, I looked at it the wrong angle, I approached it the wrong way, I executed it the wrong way, it, you know, not everybody liked it, you know, you know, we got app shortcuts, we got app actions, we got customization, but how I approached it wasn't exactly how everybody wanted it, and so in V2, I've taken the time to listen to everybody, you know, these, this feedback came from Poland, it came from Russia, it came from England, it came from all over the world, you know, these people coming at me and saying, I would love to see this happen in this app if you could, you know, and um, I've looked at reviews, I've looked at feedback, I've talked to people individually, one-on-one, -on -one. Um, I have a Telegram channel that has over 200 users in it right now and growing every day, probably about, you know, 5 to 20 people on a daily, a weekly, daily basis, and it's, it's escalating, you know. Last month I announced that V2 is coming, it's on its way out, XDA developers seen it and they wrote another article which kind of blew things out of the water, out of proportion, and... Uh, that's when my beta program kicked off, and I was just slammed with feedback. It was all positive. It was, it was just jaw-dropping. I was like, this is it. This is where we want to be. You know, everybody was just outstanding of where things are going, how things are doing. You know, the, everything was positive, and that's great. That's awesome. And, you know, I got people asking about donations. How do I you know why is this free you know why am I not paying for this you know you know that stuff's coming that's the answers are here so before uh, you know we start flooding in questions and answers and all that I want to take a, a little walk through of v2 and what it's all about you know if you've been if you've used GCA launcher before you know it's a little bit confusing it's it's a little bit intimidating you know you know what is GCA launcher first off it's an application for Android. It's a launcher home screen replacement. It replaces the desktop interface of your phone with something that I built, with something that I designed. And the main purpose of it is to make your home screen simpler, smarter, faster, battery efficient. It provides you all of these launch premium launcher features into a small package that's free. It's available for Android Go, it's available for Android 5.0 and above, Android 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and, you know, going forward with even the Android R beta. Um, are we on R? R? I don't know. 10, 11. 
whatever. Android 11 beta. Um, there's so many freaking out there. This launcher is designed for people who are simple, who just want something to present their apps in a fashion that's different, that's elegant, that's material design, that's designed for Android, that's designed to be something that we know how to use, it's just from a different perspective. You know, there are hundreds of thousands of Android launchers on Google Play right now that you could search Nova Launcher, Action Launcher, Pair Launcher, Launcher, um, Shade Launcher, Hyperion Launcher, Smart Launcher, Square Launcher, whatever. Whatever the case may be. The OnePlus Launcher, Samsung Launcher, Motorola Launcher, HTC Launcher, you, you name it, it's there. But the problem is that right now we're heading into the next generation of an Android launcher. We're getting this brand new user interface for Android. Why not approach the launcher scene with a brand new experience as well? Enter in the new generation with a brand new home screen that make the operating system feel smarter, feel faster, feel different. You know, create a launcher that's designed to work with the new full screen gestures offer you some cool app actions that you haven't had before you know present app shortcuts to you that's easier to manage that's easier to get to you know provide customization that's not too confusing but offers what you would expect in your home screen experience you know be able to customize a home screen to match a style that you're comfortable with that's easy on the eyes that just matches your phone you know matches your personality you know it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to you know understand. If you're not part of the Android operating system and the abilities and features that it can do, it can be a little bit confusing. But uh, for you know to be me and to digest all of this information and to create an application out of all of the information, uh, the headache is right here, not there. Um, all of the trouble to create all of that is in here. I took the burden of that. This is the result. This is the result of all of the feedback, all of the reviews. This is GC Launcher V2. Now, like always, the launcher was inspired by Chromium OS. It's a sing single home screen launcher experience. There's no multiple home screens. There's no multiple widgets. It's just there. It's This is it. There's nothing confusing about it you got a desktop that presents you f with a single widget below that is the shelf the shelf is where your favorite apps are the apps that you access all the time you can have a minimum of three and up to twelve you can have it scroll or you can create it so that it's two layers of apps you know it's there the search bar you have three different choices now you can either use the GCA launcher built-in search bar or you can use the Google search bar or you can use the Sesame short shortcut search bar um, more options are coming in the future this is what we're testing with right now you can take the search bar and you can put it on the bottom put it on the top of your favorite your favorite apps you know kinda adjust everything so that you know it doesn't interfere with your navigation it doesn't interfere with all of your gestures your full screen interactions with your fingers your face recognition you know you know, gestures play an important role in this launcher. We just don't want to interfere with those things. Um, one main difference in between GC Launcher version 1 and version 2 is that in version 1, the shelf in the app drawer was a single view. In V2, they have separated, separated themselves. So it kind of acts like a, a layered sheet interface. You know, you're, you're bringing up one sheet and you're pushing one down and you got a, some customization into that how it handles how it interacts with yourself you know how it interacts with your finger you got some customization customization in that you can tell it to hide the shelf completely or you can do what it's doing right now it's kinda you know leveling it out so it kinda moves out of the way but you can still see what's there you know the app drawer has been completely redesigned to be a smooth scroll so what that means is that everything that's inside the app drawer it recognizes ge gestures it recognizes that you're scrolling it moves all the content as you're scrolling it's just 
it's not kind of separated, it's not jaggy, where in version one you had to take your finger and find that sweet spot so you could drag down. That That's not a thing here anymore. You just drag down wherever to dismiss. You can either use your finger or, you know, press the back button on your phone, the home button, whatever you're comfortable with. You know, I caught myself for the longest time actually still using the navigation buttons when I was developing V2 to dismiss the app drawer because I was so used to it in V1. Um, but here, it's a completely renovated experience that just looks great, that feels great, it's smooth, it looks nice, you know, end of the story, end of the conversation. The app drawer now supports uh, a lot of cool things, you know, it's still got the two tabs, the primary tab and the secondary tab of apps where you can, you know, organize the two or just have a single tab. You know, some people like to have one tab that's specifically designed for a group of apps, you know, just all of their apps, you know. These are all my apps, they all belong here, that's that. But I like to have a second tab where, you know, these are my work apps. You know, when I go to work, these are all the apps that I use all the time. You know, I want to know that I can get to them right away, like my calculator, my camera, uh, my files, you know, my gallery, my email, you know, those those specific apps that you know you have a place designed for them, you can put them there. You can have that specific tab of apps that are there for a specific reason. Above, up here, app actions. App actions are shortcuts that you use within specific apps that are available. So, for instance, um, uh, if you use Chromium or the Chrome web browser, you know that there is an app shortcut to create a new tab or to use an incognito tab. When you use those shortcuts, the launcher recognizes that you've used those shortcuts. It stores that data in the background and presents it to you later on. Like you, We know that you've been using this shortcut instead of going this long way to access that action. Uh, here it is. You know. You know, don't take that long route. Here's a shortcut. Here it is. Use it. You know, we don't have to go that long way to get to trip A when trip B is right here. Um, another cool thing is that if you long click on your tab, it now takes you to what's called the whitelist and the blacklist. The blacklist blocks apps that you don't want to see in your app drawer. So if you have uh, some apps that you don't want to see anymore in your app drawer, you don't use them, you don't want to see them. It's got to load. Uh, they're not there anymore. So if you can't uninstall an app from your a device and you don't want to see it anymore, just hide it out of sight, out of mind. If you can't disable an app from in your system, it's not allowing you, just hide it so you don't have to worry about it, you know? If you're not using it, then it doesn't need to be there. It's not going to take up space. Don't allow, don't allow it to take up space in your app drawer. You know, these are your apps. This is your section, your personal space. Make it your personal space. You know, that's that. Above the app actions are the recent apps. These are apps that are running in the background. You know, it's not necessarily apps that you have accessed. These are just things that are running in the background that you've accessed frequently and it thinks that you're going to use these relatively soon. There's some uh, impressive logic in the background that helps calculate this, but um, that's how it works. These are recent, not really recent apps, but predictive. You know, that's a better word to put it. Um, so, you know, any apps running in the background or apps that you've used previously, they're going to appear up here. Now, that list does not stay like that. It constantly updates. So, the next time I access my app drawer, those apps may not be there anymore because the system has either dismissed them or they're not running anymore or you just haven't used them in a while. So, why have them there? You know, that's one of the problems that Android launchers do these days is they have this constant list of apps that you never use. That they It thinks that it's predictive or it's recent, but it's really not, you know. This list is 100% on the dot legit, you know. These are there for you to access, you know. It's doing a relatively good job. So um, I'm very happy with the results of that. Um, uh, somebody had noticed that why did I choose, you know, like, the circles, you know, the circles to present 
the app shapes and the app backgrounds, you know, in the app actions, the incognito tab and the Google Play Store tab. Why are they circles? Why are they rounded? Uh, those shapes actually change based on the system theme that you have enabled. So if you tell GCA Launcher to use a square theme, uh, that will change to a square. So it's nothing uh, static. It doesn't stay there. It's dynamic. It changes as you make changes to your system. So it completely rethemes itself and readjusts itself to how you want it to look, how you want it to behave. So it's nothing permanent. It's completely adaptive. It's really impressive. Um, like before, if we long click on the desktop, we have the launcher sheet menu and as you can see it's a lot more cleaned up than version 1.1 was like all launchers if you lock and long click in the background it presents you the wallpaper the widget and the launcher settings options there here as of course demonstrated you have the wallpaper action an icon pack option a widget option and a settings option and then we go below into more in-depth options like sheets and system settings we will get the sheets very soon. If you click on the wallpaper option, it's going to do one of one of two things. It's going to present you all of the options that are available to pick a wallpaper from. So these are apps installed on this device right now that presents the user an option to pick a wallpaper. Uh, usually by default it's the Google Wallpapers app which is this right here that you can pick from uh, an abundant of wallpapers that Google provides for you. You can use them. You know, it's there. Um, if you have my drywall app installed, which is my wallpaper app, it will automatically go and use drywall. It doesn't do this. It just automatically knows that drywall is the default wallpaper provider. Use it if you can, if you will. That would make me happy. The icon pack option allows you to change the look of your icons in the launcher. So one of my favorites is the Bido icon pack. We will apply it. Now the Bido icon pack has been applied and now the icons take the look of that new theme style that I've chosen for the launcher. Another customization option that everybody loves. The widget. GCA Launcher allows you to choose a single widget on your home screen by enabling this feature using this bar up here. You can then choose a widget that's available to you to use. So all the apps that are installed on your device, some have widgets, some do not. This is a list of all of the widgets that are currently available to me. So right now I have the at a glance uh, widget. Um, let's say we're going to use the analog clock so it's square. Interesting. Never knew it was square. Why is it square? Why is a clock square? Okay. One cool option that GCA Launcher offers now is that you can resize your widget by long clicking it and dragging. No. Oh, there we go. There's the size difference there. Now, once you've reached your maximum height of the widget, it kind of center centers it in that layout but once you hit that max cap it kinda shrinks it up a little bit um, some widgets do not resize themselves while some do now this is a little it still needs some work this a whole widget thing because uh, there's a lot of widgets that don't actually work with GC launcher yet those are the ones that are more complicated more complex that offer a lot of customization uh, widgets that are just straight up that just present themselves with a job that they have they work so the Google at a glance widget search bars uh, clocks they work great but once you start getting in things like over uh, uh, the weather app overdrop you know when you select a widget and it gives you all these options um, GCA launcher currently does not support those because they're just too complex for the desktop interface that we have so whether or not we actually get to a point where we can support those widgets, um, uh, time will tell. It's in the roadmap, so we'll see. The launcher settings has been completely redesigned in some aspects. You know, it kind of looks the same, um, but the whole uh, new 
thing now is that it kind of adapts itself to the launcher theme. It, it just kind of rethemed itself and adjusts things so that it's easier to read, easier to see, makes changes as you go. It now has an option for suggestions, uh, which is something similar to what Android settings does now in the newer version of Android. Uh, it gives you suggestions, things that are currently going on. So what it's uh, suggesting to me now is that it doesn't recognize that the drywall app is installed, so it's telling me to download it. It's telling me that discounted pledges are live. It's the weekend, so if you want to pledge, you want to donate, there are discounted packages that you can purchase uh, to help support development. Um, it's also telling us that the launcher has not been optimized for battery usage in the op in the operating system, so we can go do that. Uh, so the su the suggestions in the launcher settings is going to grow over time to help you modify and adjust the launcher to fit your device, so it you know feels better, makes things better for yourself. You know, gives you tips, give you uh, you know. The direction where you want to go to help make the launcher fit yourself a little bit better. But our options now the home screen shelf, app drawer, app groups, theme and style, notifications, gestures, general uh, launcher settings, developer settings, the change log, and you know some general information about development. Uh, so if you know we're clicking on themes right now we can see that there are some relatively new options here that we can play around with. So uh, the launcher now uses the Android 10 light and dark mode and you can implement it inside the launcher to use it. Uh, this does fall down all the way back to Android 5 I believe. I still need to legitimately see if it works or not but um, it should do that now. Uh, you can c choose color schemes. Yeah, you know this stuff is going to be changing, so it's a lot more easier to understand what you're actually doing. Some you know interactive changes, so that you know what you're changing. You see it in real time. Uh, that stuff is coming right now. It's just kind of you know click this, click that, change this, change that, and you'll see these settings. Um, I want to get a get away from that because. It, it's kind of intimidating people because they don't know what they're changing. They don't know what's going to happen. They just kind of click it, see what happens. Uh, we see if we like it or not, and we keep it. Um, I want to get away from that. I want to actually implement real-time changes. Um, the one thing that you know a lot of people are eyeing up right now is app groups. What is it? Well, it's a good question. In version one. Uh, people had requested folders. It's a feature that all launchers have, folders. You take an app, you drag it over another app, it creates a folder. You now have a folder of your personal apps, you know, a group of apps that you can access anytime. V2 introduces this in a new perspective. You got what's called the groups sheet, and you can create groups of apps that fit personal categories. So right now I have three categories work, home, and Google Apps. If we click on the Google Apps, here are some apps that I made into Google Apps. If we click on our home category. I got a single app in there. If I click on my work, I got a couple apps in here. These are it's called groups for a reason. It's groups of apps. They're folders. They're little personalized categories of applications that you can create in the sheet to use in different times of need you know you can have a, uh, a group of apps specifically designed for uh, photography or all your social media apps or your your Google apps your work apps your home apps you know you know this sheet is designed for you to organize all of your apps in specific groups category you know there's no e other easier way to say it um, I'm just giving myself a headache but you got groups of apps now that you can categorize you know you there's no real different way of explaining what this does uh, it's just GCA launcher now has folders and it's what we wanted there um, but it's kinda interesting you know I tackled this user interface to kinda match the one plus one folder system if you own a OnePlus One device and you open up your folders, it kind of looks like this. 
kind of works the same way, you know. You present apps, it presents the category that you're currently in. You click the app, the app opens. If you app opened it on mistake, you just click anywhere and it dismisses it, it goes back to your de desktop. So, DC Launcher now introduces folders. It's relatively cool. But you can access uh, the groups manager in two different areas. You can either access it from the launcher settings or right from the sheet. Um, but it tells you how many apps are in each category. It uh, lists them in alphabetical order. So it's really cool. But this is it's kind of in beta stages right now. Uh, we're not exactly sure um, if it's finalized or not. I still need to test it out a little bit more. Uh, allow people to mess around with it a little bit more and see how we can expand it a little bit more uh, what kind of customization people would want maybe like be able to colorize each category um, I don't know I don't know we also have so this this whole thing that we're talking about groups sheet uh, this fits in the new category of customization is called sheets Sheets is a new feature in GCA Launcher that kind of presents a feature from a different perspective. You know, this is a totally different thing that we've not seen before in a launcher. So, for example, we got the search sheet. In the search sheet, you type something, um, let's say weather. So, we can either search on Google Play for weather or we can search on Google for weather. So, we'll do Google, a Google search. So now it's probably, yep, Mountain Dew, California. Uh, that's great information, but I don't live in California. So good for you, Google. Good for you. Way to, you know, steal my data and tell me incorrect information. It was a joke. Ha ha. Now, uh, you'll see that weather is now listed here as you make searches in this group sheet or the search sheet it actually saves that search and puts it there again so if you want to search it again you don't have to retype it you know um, but because this is out in the open uh, it saves your recent searches um, this data stays within the launcher it doesn't go anywhere this is just for you to have it's you know it's not distributed anywhere it has no way of going anywhere it's just saved within the launcher so uh, don't be making some weird searches that people can see like don't be um, searching something like the world's biggest booby now when I say that I'm talking about the bird um, don't uh, thank you Dell for that demonstration in telegram by the way don't be doing some weird searches right here because this is where people can access you know people can access this if you hand them their phone they're gonna actually double tap and see your personal searches don't do anything weird you know use this for what it was intended for apps search for apps search the weather search um why are dandelions yellow? Why is the grass green? You know, simple stuff like that. Why coronavirus has not been taken care of yet? Simple stuff like that. Why is my... No, it just made it worse. Broke my hat. So, next on the list. Sheets. What else do sheets do? Dismiss. You're making me look bad. Watching you. What else can sheets do? Well, if you long click on an app, gives you some information about the application. These are your app actions. Now, app actions have been a while for a while now. I've been here for a while now. They came out when Android 7 came out. Uh, in the Pixel Launcher, when you long click on an application, this little pop-up window pops up and on, and uh, it usually displays these little icons with like an exc exclamation point or the widget icon. Um, that's this. That's this. It's the same exact stuff, except it's just presented in a totally different fashion, easier, uh, easy to understand. 
it's it's very easy um, so we can relaunch the app we can modify the notification channel we can look at the app usage stats the battery stats uh, you know information from the Android settings about the app you know actions help you access information about the application from different parts of the Android operating system so you know it, it makes it easier to action not available so that's basically telling me that in this emulator uh, this action is not available because it's not installed um, same thing there so it's probably going to give you some weird results if you're using different firmware so we'll have to check up on that um, actions are different between where you access the app so if you're using the app sheet on your shelf versus your app drawer there's going to be different actions available um, it also depends on which apps are installed so if you use the uh, application action dash uh, there will be an app action here for action dash we support that um, but below the actions are your app shortcuts these are your app actions that I was talking about earlier in your app drawer um, so if we want to access the Android settings Wi-Fi settings really quick if we want to launch an incognito tab really quick that's how we access our shortcuts now in the app drawer there are our actions that we just did now um, let's say that we want these actions to kinda you know be what we want them to be you know you know there's some specific actions that we use all the time so it's necessarily not going to change so let's say I want to view my apps on Google Play all the time I want an easier way to get there long click on the shortcut and it will save it click too fast there it will automatically save it to the list so without you having to actually launch anything action saved not quite oh now you're making me look like a fool maybe I got too much going on too much hmm found a bug hate that hate finding bugs during a demonstration I really hate it because it screws up everything <sighs> gotcha. so uh, I long clicked the app action it saved it to the list automatically it presented it in the uh, app action list immediately without me having to launch it actually uh, so that's what that's supposed to do. I hate running into bugs all the time. Um, a lot of you are questioning why there's underlines underneath the apps all of a sudden. These are notifications. Uh, as apps uh, run in the background, they gather notifications throughout the system, throughout the day. Um, the underlining tells you that you know this application requires your attention, and as it does that, it's actually going to save what's going on in the background. So. Uh, apparently, uh, this must have been the other day when I was testing, but I tried calling my wife through the emulator, and it didn't work, obviously. It was just testing something. But it's telling me that there's an ongoing call going. So we can just clear that out. So if we long click and look, now it's gone. Uh, it's They're called priority notifications. GC Launcher takes... Uh, the first come first serve notifications and presents it in the app sheet so you can kind of preview what's going on in the background if we look at Gmail um, it says front no, I don't know what that means uh, Google Photos what do you got nothing okay uh, 
what's it say on the shelf? Nothing. Bug. <sighs> so, um, if you're not really a fan of the whole underlining thing, and you're kind of, if you're a pixel launcher user or used to be, um, you can use the dot system. Uh, the dots. Uh, they look they look nicer. Um, let's see if we can find any. Oh, of course, we don't have it now. Uh, let's change that. Um, so if we send myself a dummy text. Where is Messenger? Oh, right there. So you'll see that dot right there. Of course, that dot just re-showed up. Um, yummy pie a la la Android model mode. I think it's French. I don't read French. Um, but for the Messenger app, it completely makes sense. It, it's very useful because you can long click on the app, present the app sheet, and kind of take a look at uh, just in case you missed it in the notification bar. Um, but if you uh, dismiss it from the status bar, it's supposed to dismiss as well. Darn you. Oh, it did. So the, the dot's kind of just lagging out there. But when you dismiss notifications from your status bar, it should as very well dismiss them from the launcher as well. Um, apparently it's having a hard time doing that after I spent about six months working on this damn app um, but app sheets uh, continuing going forward in the drawer so if we notice uh, the widget app action was not there on the shelf okay Google Play Store doesn't have any widgets that was a bad app to try that on Google we go to the widget app action. Uh, this is kind of like a uh, real-time widget preview. Like you're trying to find a widget that you want to put on your home screen. Uh, this app action kind of allows you to preview what's available in real time. Kind of uh, ask yourself if this is what I really want. So uh, we just chose the Google search bar there, and now it's our desktop widget. Uh, that app action I believe is only available for Android Point One and above uh, just because of the code that was used to create that app action. There's not really any way to approach it earlier versions of Android without doing some very complex things which I really didn't want to do. Uh, I didn't want to step into that uh, territory yet. Um, again if we go back to app sheets on the shelf you notice that there's an option called select app whereas in the app drawer come on um, it is not there uh, that option is actually how you change apps on your shelf now boy you're making a bad scene today what no good no bueno Android 10 doesn't fail us, I bet. <sighs> I wasn't expecting these bugs, okay? Yeah. You know, it always happens during demonstration, you know. You get ready to publish it because you, it's perfect, but when you go to demonstrate it or you go let people testing it, that's when bugs start to rear their, some, themselves up. <sighs> yes. Don't disappoint me. Or I'll throw your virtual ass in the garbage. Okay, don't disappoint me, Android 10. 
there. There. That's what it's supposed to do. Try to tell me my stuff doesn't work. Bullcrap! Know who you're talking to? Yeah. Yeah. Don't try telling me that my stuff doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's how you change apps on the shelf. Very easy. Very easy. And now it's not it's relatively different from other launchers, you know, because you gotta click and drag and you know I wasn't really a fan of the click and dragon thing. Um, but you know, that's how that works. Uh, you're probably noticing why there's this funky arrow animating now. Uh, that's called the carrot. Uh, it's supposed to be there by default. It will be there by default in the other uh, device I popped up. I had it disabled. But this is kind of just an indicator to tell you that your app drawer is open. It's, it's kind of cool. I like it. Click it, it kind of does stuff for you. So if you're not a fan of the whole gesture thing, you can just click it. So, yeah. Nice little guy. He's never disappointed me. Um, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, icon customization. So, right now, uh, we, we've we seen this here for a long time in GCA Launcher V1. Um, we had this activity where we could customize all of our icons. Uh, it was kind of a bulk thing you know you chose the shape you chose the icon pack you chose the scale you chose how big your icon what icons were and that just uh, affected everything as a mass you know that's what your icons look like in v2 you edit everything on an individual basis you know whether or not your icon uses an icon pack or not um, if there's one applied of course um, you can rename the app. Um, you can change the look of the icon. Um, cool stuff, isn't it? So you can edit the icon in real time. So if you have a bunch of icons that kind of just don't fit or they're resized differently, the shape is weird, um, you can use this tool to edit the icon on an individual basis to create a system-wide theme that looks great. You know, uh, for example, I know on um, older Xiaomi devices, their icons are square, and you can't change them. Well, you can use this tool to kind of mutate the icon to be square or rounded or circular. Uh, you can regenerate the icon to look completely different to create a theme that you like. Um, so if you're using an icon pack and there's just this one icon that's just ugly, it doesn't fit, you can disable it, you can change it. Um, so this was a must uh, that people had required that had to happen, you know. We want this, please make it happen. This was one of the first things that I had focused on. This icon customization is a big deal in launcher development in launchers period because you know uh, if you're installing a different launcher that's telling us immediately that you want a home screen that you can personalize that you can customize and you know that's why we're here that's what you should be able to do so so icon customization is just completely out of the box now but you know, there's a lot of cool things coming in V2 that aren't even done yet, and um, just right off the bat, you know, I think we nailed it. Uh, so back to the sheets here, we see that there's a notification sheet and a widget sheet that's nulled out. It's blacked. Uh, we can't access it. It's because it's not done. It's not available yet, and that's going to be like that when V2 releases, so... Um, just keep an eye on those things. Uh, there's going to be things that are blacked out. They're going to be nulled out. And over time, I will be opening doors for us to actually access that stuff and play with it a little bit more. Uh, just because of the fact that, you know, I can't roll out everything all at once and call it done. This is it. You know, that's 
that's not how things should work in my eyes. I need real-time feedback to create a, pr a product that everybody likes. You know, I'm not going to please everybody, but, you know, that's how that works. Uh, below here, forgot the title. These are just system settings, so the system applications device uh, settings. Check for updates for the launcher itself. Purchase a pledge, uh, notifications, share the launcher with other people. Uh, pledges. So it's a weekend, discount and pledges are live. Uh, doesn't work on an emulated device. Um, so, pledges, they are a way to allow users to donate to the launcher. Now, the launcher is a completely free app. If you notice premium launchers in Google Play, they're pretty pricey. You know, Action Launcher is, what, six, seven dollars? It's kind of pricey. Uh, the problem with that, there's a big problem with premium launchers. It's a one-time thing. As a developer, that's a big problem. You know, Action Launcher came out years, years ago. Years ago. And it had millions of users. All those users purchased the Pro Key, the, the license. And um, several years later, is that developer making any money right now? No. Because it's just a one-time license. All these users have the license for Action Launcher and they're expecting new things all the time. How motivated do you think that developer is when he's not making any money? You know, what's he doing? He's making third-party extensions to the launcher. He's making icon packs. He's making the Action Dash additional uh, feature that adds on to the launcher. He's working on things on the outside of the launcher to make more money. Pledges I don't think I'm going to run into that problem because it's already proved successful. In V1, users had purchased pledges. They said that they wanted to see this launcher succeed. They wanted to see more features, more requests to be made. I want to do more. I want to be able to do this. Here's $5. Here's $2. Here's a dollar. Here. You can purchase three different kinds of pledges. And what they do is they basically tell me that this user loves this app, loves this project, and wants to see more. And so in V2, I've kind of taken that to a step up. On the weekends, there's different pledges that you can purchase. They're discounted. So, you know, if you don't have a lot of money on you, but you want to support the project, pledges will be discounted. They're going to be cheaper. During the weekday, the prices go up. So it's kind of like a, you know, everybody received their paycheck. Here's, a, here's discounted stuff, you know. Um, but pledges are what drive this project. I made a lot of money last year on V1 just on pledges. So with V2, the whole system has been revamped so that you can continue purchasing them, that there's more options available to buy. And they're just, they fund the project. So when a new update releases, you're like, dang, this guy deserves a new pledge to be purchased. I want to donate to this update just alone. You know, I don't want to just buy this one pledge and say that's it I'm done this is all the money that I'm putting towards this product you know it's designed for you to donate on an update basis you know every time new things come out every time you make a request and those requests are made you can purchase these things and keep funding the project keep fueling the project and uh, that's what made pledges so successful is because that's how the version 2.0 update was created was funded was from everyone pledging in V1. So it works. It's very successful. And so instead of making people pay for something that, you know, maybe at some point in time something may happen that I can't work on the project anymore, you're paying for something that you can't use anymore that's obsolete. You know, I don't want that to be the case. I want you to have the pr freedom and not be obligated to buy something that you're not very happy about. Uh, I want you to be able to understand that when you purchase a pledge, when you pr make a donation, that that money is going directly to me to keep building on to the launcher, to keep building on the product, to make it successful, to keep expanding horizons, to keep reaching out to the outer parts of the world to see what other people want. So it's it works. It's very successful and I think other launcher developers should follow on that um, instead of just making a one-time payment fee or some sort of subscription you know why pay for something when it's not being actively developed in the background you know so that
that's that's my perspective on that. Um, but a couple of other interesting things in the background about GCA Launcher. It's got a brand new theme engine when which it watches and monitors your wallpaper that you have. So it kind of tints everything based on the tint of your wallpaper. So the wallpaper that I have right now, uh, blue seems to be the primary color that it has detected. So it's kind of throwing blotches of blue here and there in the menus and in the shelf in the app drawer. Um, if we go into launcher settings, and the blue is now in the toolbar. Um, cool stuff. If we go to the system theme and make it dark, it's going to use a dark system theme. So now our menus are using black tint on white text. So this is the uh, shape theme thing that I was talking about earlier. So you'll see that our uh, search bars, it's now squares, our icons are square. It, it just cracks me up all the time. You know, how far this launcher has come, it still blows my mind of what I was able to accomplish. But um, ultimately, the world's going to decide if I was successful or not. Uh, GC Launcher V2 releases this month and. I'm pretty excited to see what everybody thinks about it, honestly. Um, no, I'm just... I came here with this huge beach, and... I don't, I, I don't have anything. You know, it's... I can't tell you how you're going to feel about the project. I, I can't tell you to download the app. I can't tell you to use the product to share it. Um, you got to use it to know it. You got to use it to love it. Uh, you gotta like me to like it. If you don't like me, then you probably won't like the product. And I'm, I'm here to communicate with. You know, that's something that a lot of app developers don't do these days. Uh, you can't make a good product if your community don't speak, doesn't speak out. You know, that's, that's part of being a, a, a person in charge, a manager, a boss. You, you gotta manage your crew. You gotta be the heart of everything that runs you're not that person you're not going to be successful if you're not successful then the product that you make will not be successful you gotta be just as active as the product that you're trying to put out in the world and I've been doing this for 10 years and I've I failed a lot um, you know the first five years I was apt uh, a ROM developer and the fifth year that I was doing it when I decided to quit I was accused of copying a ROM. Um, I was accused of copying features, and uh, uh, I was put in this like virtual courtroom um, where uh, the other developer came out and said, "Here's the work that he copied." And I was like, "Dude, uh, we're using the same base ROM. We're set using the same software. How else do you want me to edit this? You know, this is closed source. We're hacking something. You know, how else is there to do this? You know, you can't do it any different." And that was around time where I decided to become an app developer because, you know, if you're an app developer, you can do the same stuff as a launcher dev. You can present a brand new experience of your phone in a launcher instead of a custom ROM. You, you, know, you can bring people a new experience just by giving them a new app, you know. Why should you have to sit here and unlock your device and root your device to install a brand new ROM that gives you new stuff when you can do all that in a launcher? you know make your phone feel brand new you know it doesn't you know not everybody has the money to purchase a brand new device um, and home screen launchers they they make your your phone your device feel different again they feel new make you be able to do new things manage stuff um, but the, the sixth and seventh year of me being an app developer um, it was more like uh, 
watching and monitoring, see what people were doing, trying to experiment with what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. And I kind of like sat down on being a GUI developer modder. Um, I design, I design stuff. I make it happen. Um, I bring ideas to life. You know, I'm n I'm not about copying other people. And you know, this guy he's making this app and it's very successful. Let's make that same app, but ours from our perspective. Now, um, that's not how. I do things. Um, I kind of look at things from a perspective where it hasn't been there yet. You know, no one's gone in that territory yet. That's kind of developer that I am. I want to explore things that haven't been done yet. And you know, with me being a country person and living out in the country, living out in the boonies, not having technology available to me, and, and being able to create something that hasn't been done before, you know, that's where that comes from. Uh, being surrounded with people all the time and seeing what other people are doing and copying them uh, you're not going to be very successful if you do that but um, for those of you who could join me today it's been fun um, but in the real world perspective this is what I do in the meantime so this file right here is the launcher class and this is the main file uh, that kind of drives the heart of the application. This is the main class inside the Android package of GCA Launcher that runs everything. This is one file with uh, th over 1300 lines of code and that's just one file. That's just one class. So each of these folders I'm opening up is a new class of other files. Each class could have anywhere from 400 lines of code to over 5,000 lines of code. All of it I wrote from scratch. All of it was inspired by every single one of you who are a part of the Telegram group who use this launcher, who talk to me on an individual basis and recommend things. Uh, V2 was developed by the community, was developed by the people who follow me that are located all over the world that talk to me. And I'm happy to have you on board. I'm happy to be that guy that you report to on an everyday basis that's, that you know shares my work that writes articles about me that you know there's this one guy in the US and Pennsylvania that writes this app and I want to talk about him thank you that's that's awesome that's you know you, you growing up in the country and not talking to people and you know doing your own thing your whole life and then all of a sudden the world is talking about you that's it's cool. That's really cool. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this launcher, this app, this product—it's nowhere near complete. It's just the beginning. 